In this video, we'll look at another example with the VCG mechanism. This one will be slightly more complicated than the single item option we've looked at before, but it'll help to show how VCG can be applied to all kinds of settings to determine optimal outcomes for society. Imagine we have a group of friends, Desmond, Michael, and Chuck, who are deciding on where to go for dinner tonight. They have three options. They can go to an Italian restaurant, they can go to a Chinese restaurant, or they can go to a British restaurant. Desmond's favorite out of the three options is Italian food, while Michael's favorite is British food, and Chuck's favorite is Chinese food. Inevitably, when they try voting on which restaurant to go to, they end up in a tie. They keep arguing about which food they should get, and eventually you decide to offer your help. You're already aware of the VCG mechanism's useful properties, so you decide to try using it to find the best decision for your friends. To collect their preferences in a quantifiable way, you give each friend a slip of paper and ask them to write down their willingness to pay for each of the options. So the papers might have a question like, how much would you pay if it meant you would eat Italian food tonight? And another question might be, how much would you pay if it meant you would eat Chinese food tonight? And similarly for British food. So each person writes down their willingness to pay for each of those options and they give you back the slips of paper. And these are the results that you receive. You can see there's a separate row for each friend and a separate column for each option. The dollar amounts in each cell represent what the particular person wrote down for that particular option. So we can see that Desmond wrote down that he would pay $33 to get Italian food tonight, $25 to get Chinese food, and only $11 to get British food. We can see similar numbers for the other two friends, and you'll notice that they match with what they voted for earlier. Michael's favorite was British food, and hence his willingness to pay for British food is the highest out of the other options. Chuck's favorite was Chinese food, and so his willingness to pay for Chinese food is the highest out of his other options, and similarly for Desmond with Italian food. Now that you have this information, you need to determine what is the optimal outcome using the VCG mechanism and what payments should be made to each friend. You can pause the video at this point if you'd like to try solving this on your own. I'll probably put a link in the description to a spreadsheet template that you can use to help organize the numbers involved. So if you'd like, pause the video at this point to try this on your own, and I'll share the solution in a little bit. Alright, so to find the optimal outcome, we need to find the sum of each friend's values for each of the three choices. For Italian food, this is $63. For Chinese food, this is $81. And for British food, it's $74. Out of these options, Chinese food results in the highest sum of utilities among the three friends, so Chinese food would be the best option in this scenario. Now let's calculate each person's payment under the VCG mechanism. Recall that the VCG mechanism imposes a payment on each agent in a way that encourages them to bid truthfully. We'll start by calculating Desmond's payment. As a reminder, the payment under VCG is equal to the total welfare of the other agents when that specific agent is present, minus the total welfare of the other agents and the outcome we would have selected if that specific agent was absent. To find the outcome we would select without Desmond, it's quite simple. We just calculate the sum of values like before, but we just ignore Desmond's value for each option. You can see the math on screen for how this is done. And from doing so, we find that when Desmond is absent, British food would be the best outcome, yielding a social welfare of $63. We can now solve for Desmond's payment. For the social welfare when he's present, we take the total social welfare from choosing Chinese food, which we calculated before was $81, and just subtract Desmond's private value of $25 for that outcome, and this difference represents the welfare of Michael and Chuck for that outcome we've chosen. We can also subtract the welfare of the others from choosing to get British food, which is what we would have chosen if we ignored Desmond's preferences. We found that amount to be $63, and by solving the expression, we get that Desmond will pay $7 to the mechanism. Now let's calculate Michael's payment. Again, we'll need to find the outcome that we would have chosen if Michael was absent from this scenario. And similar to before, we just sum up each person's values but ignore Michael, and find which one gives the most social welfare without Michael. In this case, it looks like it's Chinese food, which yields a social welfare of $64. So even when Michael is absent, we still end up selecting Chinese food. We can now solve for Michael's payment, and intuitively, because we're selecting Chinese food whether or not he's taken into account, then the welfare of the others when he's present is equal to the welfare of others when he's not present, so his payment just ends up being $0. And finally, we can calculate Chuck's payment. So, same process as before, we just sum up each outcome but ignore Chuck's values, and we find which one yields the highest social welfare. In this case, it looks like Italian food with a social welfare of $55 ends up being the best option when Chuck is absent. Now we can solve for his payment. 
Again, we'll deduct Chuck's personal value for Chinese food of $39 from the total social welfare of $81 in order to make this term equal to the other social welfare for the optimal outcome. And of course, we'll then subtract the other social welfare for the alternative outcome of Italian food, which is, again, what we would have selected if Chuck was absent. And we get that Chuck makes a payment of $13 to the mechanism. Now would be a good time to just summarize our solution for this problem. So first of all, we found that the best outcome is for the friends to get Chinese food tonight. We've also found that according to the VCG mechanism, Desmond will make a payment of $7 and Chuck will make a payment of $13. Desmond values Chinese food at $25 and after making his payment, he's left with a net payoff of $18. Michael values Chinese food at $17 and doesn't receive any payment, so his payoff is also $17. Finally, Chuck values Chinese food at $39, remember that Chinese food was the option he originally voted for, and he makes a payment of $13, giving him a net payoff of $26. You might notice how Chuck is forced to make a higher payment compared to Desmond. Intuitively, Desmond and Michael don't value Chinese food as much as Chuck does. You may remember that only Chuck voted on Chinese food being his favorite option in that initial scenario. And because we've determined that Chuck's presence in the group is indeed pivotal in the mechanism's decision of Chinese food, Chuck ends up imposing a greater social cost onto the others compared to Desmond. And so we end up charging him more to account for that. You can also see that Michael ends up with the least payoff out of all of them. Which shouldn't be too surprising. After all, he values Chinese food the least out of the other three options. Now we can try, just for fun, imagining an alternative scenario where Michael lies about his willingness to pay for the three options. Specifically, let's say that he really wants to end up getting British food tonight because that's his favorite out of the options, so he decides to write down that he'd be willing to pay $80 instead of $40 to get British food. In this new scenario where Michael lies, we can now try solving for his payment and his net payoff to see if he ends up better off in the end by lying compared to when he wrote down his true value for British food. Again, I encourage you to pause this video at this point and try solving for Michael's new payoff, and you can come back to see the solution. Alright, so we'll first need to find the outcome that the VCG mechanism would pick under these new reported values. And not surprisingly, because Michael only lied about his value for British food, the mechanism now thinks that British food is the best outcome, supposedly yielding $114 worth of social welfare for the group. And to solve for the payment that Michael makes, we'll also need to find the outcome that we would have chosen if he was absent. So we'll add together all the values while ignoring Michael, and we can find which outcome yields the highest social welfare. When we do this, we find that Chinese food ends up being the best choice when Michael is absent, yielding $64 worth of social welfare for the others. Intuitively, because Michael is the only one lying in this scenario, the outcome we would choose in his absence, which is to choose Chinese food, is the same as the outcome we choose in his absence as in the original problem where Michael was being honest. So now we can solve for Michael's payment. The mechanism thinks that the welfare from choosing British food is $114, and will subtract Michael's reported value of $80 from this amount, so that this first term equates to the social welfare of Desmond and Chuck. We can also subtract the social welfare of the outcome we would choose in Michael's absence, which is $64 from choosing Chinese food, and we get that Michael ends up paying $30 to the mechanism. It's important to keep in mind that Michael's actual value for British food remained unchanged at $40, and so when he makes the payment of $30, he's left with a net payoff of $10. Notice how the $10 payoff he earns when he lies to get British food picked is less than the $17 he earned in the original scenario where he was honest. This serves as another example of how the VCG mechanism incentivizes truth-telling. An intuitive way to understand this is to think about the concept of agents paying their social cost. When Michael lies just to get his favorite option picked instead, he's essentially hurting the other two friends by preventing us from picking the outcome that's actually best for the group. And so, due to the payment rules of the VCG mechanism, we ultimately end up punishing Michael for this cost that he's imposing onto the others. Hopefully this was an interesting example to look at. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments, let me know what you think about this video, any suggestions for improvement, or any topics you'd like to see in the future. I really hope you enjoyed watching, and I look forward to seeing you again.